But when do when are you? Do you ever think about retiring? No, because my work isn't done. You retire when your work is done, and I, it isn't done because I really want this place to be top of the line. I want it to be the best I can have it. I think I owe it to my own people. I owe it to this city. This whole city has been so helpful to me. You could not believe. Everybody has helped me in this city, all the chefs. Um, uh, I have friends who help me, Ella Brennan, who's a great lady of the restaurant world in this city. She's been kind and she's helped me wherever she could help me. And I owe so much to people. I can't afford to die, really. <laughs> <laughs> I better pay off these debts before I die. Uh, but I have to do what I have to do. So I think I should work and make this a perfect space make this as good as I can make it. And it's not there yet? Not to me, it isn't. Mm -mm. But it is to so many other people. Well, because they're not looking at the same eyes. They're looking out of Dickie's eyes. <laughs> so, they're looking out of Dickie's eyes. Dickie's always telling me, you can't do this. Uh, you can't do this. And I hate for people to tell me what I can't do because that's the one thing my mother always told us. She said, can't is not in the dictionary. And we were too stupid to look and see if it was there or not. <laughs> we just knew we couldn't say can't. And we didn't say can't. <laughs> so, every time they tell me, you can't do something, I go crazy <laughs> and go do it again. So I'll be around here till I, I'll get it done. I'll get it done. We always end the, the, the visionary interviews with, with uh, a few standard questions that we ask each elder uh, and I beg your pardon dear elder I'm an elder now you are yes now I'm an elder <laughs> now okay. you're an elder <laughs> now you are yes yeah because that's the only way you can be a visionary oh it, you have oh, to be 70 or above oh okay we only okay. we don't take young kids except this one time you know except yeah. this one this time one, <laughs> yeah you can you can be 35 in your brain and your mind but you got you, know, you got to hit that 70. you got to hit you know, that yeah, 70 we have some mark, yeah we have some people who are trying you know quincy is look like uh, but he just i think he just turned 70 so quince quincy no, quince made 70 on his last birthday was it his, yeah i think so yeah, he should. Yeah. Son of a gun, I'm going to put him down. He's getting too old. <laughs> down him. Yeah, he sure did. He yeah. sure did. Yeah, he's a yeah. folks, I love you him. Know. He's a good guy. I yeah. love him. Yeah, 70 is not what it used to be, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, question number one. How would you describe yourself? How would I describe myself? I don't know. I'm just Leah. I just love everything, and I love living. That's the most important thing. Um, I guess I'm too pushy. That, that's, I think that might be my whole downfall. I'm a little bit too pushy. I, I don't make myself satisfied enough. And sometimes you can come through as an ingrate in some people's eyes when you do that. So I guess that's what I am, a little bit too pushy. And I want to do it all. I want to do it all, and I can't do it all. But I'm not going to say can't. I'm going to still try to do it all, you know, <laughs> get it okay. all done. What is your definition of leadership? Somebody who can work with people, somebody who can encourage people to do things, as I said again, somebody who can encourage people to feel their worth. That's what every leader should be about. It should be about helping other people get up that ladder. That's, that's what I think leadership is all about. What is the major public misperception of you? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe uh, <laughs> my daughter can answer that. She said, you got the public food. You got the public food. They think you're all sweet and nice, and you're not. <laughs> so that might be it. They think I'm all sweet and nice, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm good, I guess, but I can get real ugly sometimes, real ugly. So Leah would answer that question. That's what she always say. You got the public food. 
They think you all sweet and nice, <laughs> but you're not. <laughs> sometimes I come through hard, and sometimes that's where Dookie's attitude is, and that's maybe why we've been gelling for 57 years, because I'm so pushy and so hard. I want you to do everything you can do. I want everything out of a person. I want them to give me everything. I want people to reach back and get that extra thing. Uh, I One picture in mind that I loved, Bob Gibson. I loved Bob Gibson because he could go those six innings and get tired, but he could reach back and come through those other innings for you. I like people who can reach back and get that extra strength. And sometimes that makes you a hard person. Uh, really hard. If I'm in my business here working, and it's, it's the strangest thing with me, honey. I'm not working for money for some uncanny reason when I'm in here. Money doesn't come across my, it's I got to satisfy that person. I have to do this job. I have to do this job. I never worry about the money. It's going to come to you. But, and don't get in my way when I'm trying to do this job. But Dookie is not like that. He's a little bit softer that, you know, he'll stop the work uh, to help somebody who fell out on the floor. No, I'm going to walk over you and push you on the side <laughs> and get my work done, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Hey, I said, just one time we had a waitress fell out on the I said, Dookie, I'll give you five minutes to get her off of my floor. <laughs> get her off of my floor. <laughs> Poor girl. <laughs> I got to get this work done, you know. But that's the way I am. And sometimes that's just too hard. And, you know, it's just too hard. And people tell me that, like, when Em died, Em was, I was the biggest hurt I had. But I had to do what I had to do. You know, I mm -hmm. can bury Em. I have to bury Em. I have to do what I have to do, but I have to do my work. Too. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that's a little bit too hard, you know, and he, he makes up with the salt in. <laughs> what do you consider your greatest achievement? My greatest achievement? I don't know. I think what I think I've done in life, as I told you, I always wanted people to like me. I always wanted people to like me and I would work so hard for people to accept me, and I think that I have done. I have received the Loving Cup here, which is the biggest award you could get in the city, and I'm truly grateful for that because it'll give other people a chance. People little like me will know, well, I don't have to be the biggest man in the world to get this high award. I just have to do what I have to do for other people and lift other people. So I think I've achieved that in life. I've raised my children the best I can do and they have been all successful. So I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for my children. They have done well. And I, I think I've gotten people to, um, to like me. I'll never forget, I went to a place and a man I did not even know, we were at the food and wine experience or something, and I was receiving another award. And he looked at me, I don't know the man, I never saw him before. He said, I wish I was like you. I said, what? He said, I wish I was like you. Everybody loves you. So that made me feel so good. I'm ready to go back and work again. I can work some more. You know? So I always tell people something good, they can work again. <laughs> what is your greatest regret? I, my greatest regret, maybe, I, I can't say it isn't because I didn't get all the education I would have liked to have gotten. I, I don't think that worries me uh, very much. You know, I just make do with what I have. Um, I don't know, maybe I would have looked at life a little different than I look at it now uh, if I would have done things a little different. If I would have lived maybe a little slower paced, maybe I would have done better. And I guess sometimes you can regret that. And when you become a parent, especially, you regret anything that might have hurt your own parents. Maybe my lifestyle upset my parents, upset my mother. Uh, and when you think about giving anybody any pain, when you're a parent, 
and you know what all this pain is, you hate yourself for saying, oh, that must have hurt my mother. You know, mm -hmm. so you kind of regret those things that you did anything to, to hurt anybody. What advice would you want to give to young African Americans? The same advice I'd give anybody, African American, everybody. You have to be yourself. Just be yourself. Don't try to be anybody else. You're yourself. And do what you have to do in life. Treat everybody right do things for others and try to uplift people as you go and work. You have to work. Nothing is going to be easy, particularly African-American women. I am a strong believer that they have still a lot of work to do. You know, the macho men will tell you this, that, the other, but you have a job to do. You can get places as a woman, as an African-American woman, that sometimes they can't get in. You do it, and you just don't drop them down like a hot potato, you know, because I think that's what we've done. You know, we said, what's happened to the African-American man? Nothing. All of these years, black women have been doing and doing for these men, because in slavery days, they couldn't do they would have been killed. So we could get in there and act dumb and stupid. They're gonna think we're dumb and stupid anyway and get the job done. But now we all educated and we think we so smart. So we drop this man like a hot potato cause we high and mighty and hey, he's down on the ground. Can't do that, you gotta ease people down slowly. If you wanna dump them, ease them down slowly so it doesn't bang them too hard <laughs> you know? but you got to uplift people and just use whatever talent you have use them. I tell that to people all the time you know and you know when as African Americans we used to almost be ashamed of what we look like of our color I had one girl here she was as black as your pants and she I'd say Hermine, I'm going to slap your black face. So her, it wasn't the matter of slapping her face that upset her. It was because I called her black. I said, but Herm, look at yourself in the mirror, sweetheart. You're black. Now, I don't have to slap your face, but you're black. And that's what you ought to use. That's you. It's the beauty in you. And that's what you're going to get you places. It's you. And you know, she really learned to love me after that. She learned to appreciate me after that. As she comes, she got to slap my black face. But you know, it was that. Don't be ashamed of whatever you are. You're black. There's nothing wrong with that. That's you. You know. Final question. And, and that's what you have to do. Final question. Are you optimistic or pessimistic about America's racial future? I'm optimistic about everything. I am optimistic about everything. We are on the checkerboard now as African Americans. We have to make the right moves. It's all out here for us. It's all here for us. We just have to play the game right. And you can't, you just have to move in there and do things that you have to do. This whole space is your space. There's no divided space anymore. It's your space, it's everybody's space. So you have to just go on and we have to quit saying what's ours and what's yours. I belong to an organization, the uh, Food Alliance, Southern Food Alliance, and well, we have some black people in there. Well, you have taken our food. Our food, it's not yours, it's everybody's food. It's not yours to begin with. It's not theirs, it's not, it's yours. This whole world is yours. Just get your share out of it, and it's up to you. So just keep going.